Hello, my name is Paul Maybe, and I'm a developer on the Visual Studio C++ team. Today I will be talking about a few new features introduced in Visual Studio's Linux development tools over the four releases in the last year, 17.7, 17.8, 17.9, seven and 17.10. We have made several usability changes to the Connection Manager. The Connection Manager is the tool used for creating and managing persisted SSH authentication information. It enables users to reference specific targets for remote development without having to re-enter the authentication information each time a connection to the target is required. We've heard from many users about usability issues with the connection creation form. The new form addresses these problems. First, I'm going to bring up the Connection Manager from Tools, Options, Cross-Platform. There's the Connection Manager. I'll click the Add button to add a new connection. I'll be using an Ubuntu VM on my local machine for this example. I'll fill out the form, but I'm going to misspell the name of the host machine. And then just give it some random username and password just to show you the error processing when you can't contact the remote host. So I hit connect here. It's going to try to make a connection and when it fails you see it's very clearly giving you a connectivity failure. The fields that might be wrong are clearly identified, right? In this case the host name and the port. Okay, so now let's try uh, fixing that. And rather than uh, that username, we supply my username on this VM. And uh, let's try giving it a private key. And the private key file we'll use is, uh, let's see, this RSA key here. And it has no passphrase, so I'll clear that. And now, uh, when I try to make a connection, uh, again, I get an error. Uh, it says private key failure. So the problem in this case is that the private key RSA is an unsupported private key type, and it's telling me exactly uh, what's wrong with this. All right, finally, uh, let's try switching this from a private key type to a password type and again I'm going to mistype the password and try to connect. Uh, this time it goes all the way through to the machine. I'm able to connect to the machine and it's asking me to verify the fingerprint and I'm going to OK that. Uh, now it's going to test the connection with that username and password and again authentic this time it tells me there's an authentication failure. Uh, and it tells me to make sure the username and password are correct because the password, in fact, is not correct. So uh, now I'll just fix that password. And connect. And again, it's going to ask me to verify the fingerprint. And now it uh, successfully made a connection and verified it. And I've got a new connection here. Localhost Paul May on an Ubuntu. I'm going to set it as the default. OK. The integrated terminal now reconnects automatically when a connection is lost. This feature makes dealing with systems with flaky connections a little easier. I'm going to start by opening the integrated terminal window from View, Terminal, and I have my new terminal and it's just in a shell on the local machine. I'm going to connect it to my remote Linux machine by just selecting that connection that we just made. Paul made at localhost and now I'm on a Linux machine here. I can do an ls and you'll see my files on this machine. Now I'm going to shut down my VM. Okay. So there I've shut it down and you see that it's, the terminal now says it's disconnected and it's attempting to reconnect. And now I will start my VM back up here. 
and there it started and sure enough I've reconnected now I'm back on the remote machine A fairly new tool in Visual Studio, the Remote File Explorer allows you, the user to browse a remote file system by selecting a Connection Manager connection. The Remote File Explorer now also supports view and edit file capabilities. I'll start by opening the Remote File Explorer from the View menu, Remote File Explorer. It's automatically going to connect to uh, that connection we just made. Paul May at localhost. Uh, you can see my files here. I uh, home Paul May. And I'll take us down to my test directory. Uh, here's test. And uh, we'll open up test.cpp. Just double click on that. And there's the content of it. We can edit this file. And uh, save its contents. And now if I go to uh, the test directory down in my uh, shell here, and I uh, compile that file and run it. We'll see that, in fact, I did uh, succeed in editing, saving the file to the remote machine. So this is a new feature in the Remote File Explorer. Finally, users with complex CMake source repos have run across problems with Visual Studio copying their project files to a remote Linux device as long as their build source is rooted at the location of the cmakelist.txt file, then everything is fine. But if the cmakelist.txt file is located somewhere further down in the source tree and it references files through some ancestor directory, then the remote copy of the repo sometimes ends up being strangely laid out. This causes confusion and occasionally build errors. We have changed the cmake presets to more directly support the scenario. Users can now express more precisely how they want the sources copied. From the Open CMake project, I'm going to select cmakepresets.json and edit that file. Then I'll go up to the Targets, Systems, and select the same connection that we've been using, localhost. And the configuration will be Linux 1.0. Now let's notice a few things. In the Solution Explorer, you can see that the source is rooted at WSL, and the CMake text is at the source directory under WSL. So here's our CMake texts, and it's analogous CMake presets.json. In the CMake presets.json file, if we look at the Linux configuration and at the Visual Studio remote settings object, we'll see that the source stir is set to that same location, WSL source under home.vs, which is where the default location for user projects. So the user expects the same project layout on the remote side as he has on the local side, where his CMake text is at WSL source. Okay, but if we go down and look at our CMake log, we see that in the configuration that the source there, in fact, is under source, 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 <laughs> and so it's in, not in the uh, same places. Uh, it didn't end up matching the, user, the user's expectations. The strain paths are because of some deductions Visual Studio made about how the entire project was laid out. Deductions that were not quite right in this uh, particular case. The project still configures and builds, 
but it looks strange to the user. And if there are relative file paths in the CMake list.txt file, they may not resolve correctly. Okay, Visual Studio implements a new configuration object for telling the user how to copy the sources. I'll scroll down to the next Linux configuration, 2.0, here. It has a remote settings object, which is at version 2.0. And instead of specifying the sourcer like we did above, directly, we specify the source router, and that is the location of the source root on the local machine, and the remote source router, and that's the location where the Visual Studio should copy the sources on the remote machine. So, source router here is just the local source directory, one level up. So this is just taking us one level up, and we we'll always want the local the source router to be to contain the current source directory. Otherwise, you won't get your source copied correctly. Uh, and then the remote source router just tells us where to um, copy on the remote side, which is at the WSL location. Okay, and now if I switch uh, my configuration to this new one, then CMake will reconfigure. And now if we look at the directories, We see that the sourcer is now in the place we expect it, and the projector is also in the place we expect it. So the user now has a remote configuration, a remote layout for their files that matches their expectations, and relative paths in their CMake list will resolve correctly. These are some of the new features introduced in the Linux tooling this year. I hope you enjoy them. All this work was done in response to user feedback, so please keep your comments and suggestions coming. Thanks.